boy, Just 33 Kings production. Hey, I got an exclusive. You got to see what I see. Please watch this video as I break this thing down. I may have just solved the case. I may have just found the murderers. Hear me out on this one. Hear me out on this one. Remember when um, they was talking about they was trying to carry Kanika out of the hotel room and they forgot the phone and so they had to go back in and when they went back in, Kanika was gone? So right now, we can just imagine or picture Kanika going downstairs, right? Going downstairs, and these people, these three people were her friends, and they left her. Now, watch this. Watch the girl in the white shirt, in the white jacket. She's going to notice the camera and put her head down, and you're going to see something after this. These are the three people that possibly tried to carry her out the room and put her back, and, and, and then she left, and they went back in. Now, watch this. Now, watch this. Just hear me on this one. Hear me on this one. You see, she put her head down. You see the other one. They're walking. They laughing. They saying she drunk or what have you. Now, watch the time. It was 105. 105. And now at 118, 119, 127, this elevator is opening up. For what? Because these two creeps, 149. These two creeps. Did you just miss it? You just, you missed it. It happened that quick. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. It happened just that quick. Here they are. Right here. It's 149. They looking out. These guys could be Kanika Jenkins killer because they're looking for someone. This is... Let me pause it real quick. This is not the... Okay. If those three women left already. And they left already, right? They're already gone, right? And that was like at 109. Now Kanika's walking in the in the, in the, in the, in the hallway. It walking in the hallway around this time, possibly. Or she's probably downstairs in the kitchen. And they know it. They know that she's in the kitchen. Now watch this guy. It's more than one. You see the guy with the white hat? Wait a minute. Let's go back for a second. Let me ask the question. Let me ask the question. Why is it that these people have sunglasses on in a hotel? Why is it that the other one got a hat on concealing who he is in a hotel? The rest of the girls, they got their head showing. They got their face showing stuff for one. She put her head down. Holla at your boy. Listen. Now watch this. Now the other one's gonna dip out. You see them? They're looking for somebody. They look both ways. Both ways to go back in. Maybe we're on the wrong floor. And that's when they went and got Kanika. Here's the security guard. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bombshell. Bombshell. Remember. They said it was how many different semen counts? Three. You got the two men on the elevator. You got the one security guard that's right, that's right around each other that's noticing or seeing the same thing. Or let me, let's, let me pause. Let me pause because I'm getting. <sighs> Take a breath. Take a breath. Look at this shit, y'all. Look at this shit, y'all. Look at this shit, y'all. And I'm not trying to go back and say, oh, I got to go back nine months. No, I, I just came across this video and I'm looking and these red boxes are still going off. And I remember when um, um, we was, we was, we, 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 the hotel, I remember Irene Monifa, Irene said in Zach TV one interview, he said clear as day that they, um, tried to carry out, she was kind of drunk and stuff, too drunk, and they tried to carry her out the hotel room. Now, they forgot a phone or some keys or something, and so they all three went back in, and when they came back out, Kanika was gone. Could this very well be the time that Kanika lost her life at this time? Could it very well be that time? Because mind you, the three girls that you seen could have been those three girls. And they left around that time. Now, fast forward to like 149, 139, because it was one half an hour later, you got these two creepy dudes stepping off the elevator. You got these 
two, these three, you got him looking with sunglasses on, all red, hoodie, hoodie, all that stuff. And then you got his boy looking the opposite way, looking in the opposite direction. This is at 149. Just think, what if they went down and took her life or raped her? Now you have, guess what? 10 minutes later, you got the security guard running around. Those are your three characters. Right around the same time. Right around the same time. Right around the same time. Is it possible? That's why they chose to try to mix us up with the time slot. With the time slot. That's why the clock kept jumping everywhere. And it, we kept just seeing different time zones and shit. Different times and shit like that. Think about what you're watching. Let's go back to the beginning. You have the three girls leaving. You have three of them leaving. You have the three girls leaving. You have the three girls leaving. Irene said there was people that was trying to carry her out, but they couldn't. They left her in the hallway for like two minutes or a minute, and they and they came back, and she was gone from in front of the hotel room. Kanika went downstairs, possibly went to the kitchen. Now let's fast forward. Let's go. Let's let's go. Let's go. They laughing probably at Kanika like, oh she yeah, she drunk as fuck or she high as fuck. That's at one o five one ten. Now here's the elevator opening and shut. That's probably Kanika. That's probably Kanika. That's probably Kanika because she's she's supposed to get off at that floor, but she didn't. She was probably zoned out at that moment and she went downstairs. And this guy and these guys came down after her looking for her and actually thought that she got off at this floor and said, no, she ain't on this floor. Let's go down another level. And and then that's what they're looking, they're looking for someone. Sunglasses. Think about what you're watching. Think about what you're watching. If this cut off before it ends, I'm going to upload it. I, 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 and sometimes the shit cuts off and I'm going to upload it. And then I'm going to do a, another video after this one. So if, you, if you're looking at this. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go forward. Here's the security guard queuing in. Three different people. Three. Three. Let's talk about this shit. Let's hash this. Let's talk about this. Let's fast forward. Let's see what two minutes into this video. This security guard is running everywhere. This is at two something now. He's doing a lot of jobs now. We already seen this piece. But did we ever put it together at the beginning? Irene said that they left her and they left. They left. They they drove the car. They thought Kanika was okay. I guess they just said she out probably partying. Kanika goes downstairs. That's Kanika in that elevator probably. And she didn't get off at the right floor. She's supposed to get off at that floor. But she didn't. She went down and then they came and said, oh, look, look, damn, camera, jump back on. But just look, put your sunglasses on and just look. Oh, my God, I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm sweating on just this piece. We can fast forward a little bit, go to, to the scene. And this is what pisses me off. Because they have found Kanika at this moment. It's the second time Jacqueline Johnson cried next to her son Kendrick's grave. The first time he was being lowered into the ground. This time he's being pulled out of it. Did you ever expect you'd have to exhume his body? No, I didn't expect to have to bury his body. In June, Kendrick's body was sent to Florida. The Johnsons hired Dr. Bill Anderson to conduct an independent second autopsy. In that autopsy, Anderson told the Johnsons he'd found evidence that Kendrick died as the result of a blow to the neck and not accidental asphyxia after slipping into a rolled gym mat at school, as investigators in Georgia had said. But what Dr. Anderson did not find shocked them. When we got the body uh, for the second autopsy, that organs, the heart, lungs, liver, etc., were not with the body. The brain? The brain. They were all absent. Every organ from the top of Kendrick's head to his pelvis, gone. And his family had no idea. We have been let down again. 
And when we buried Kendrick, we thought we was burying Kendrick, not half of Kendrick. Uh, I'm not sure at this point who did not return the organs to the body, but I know when we got the body, the, the organs were not there. So CNN contacted the two entities that had custody of Kendrick's body and access to his organs. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation, which conducted the first autopsy in January, and Harrington Funeral Home, which the Johnsons chose to embalm and prepare Kendrick's body for burial days later. A spokeswoman for the state tells CNN after its autopsy, the organs were placed in Johnson's body, the body was closed, then the body was released to the funeral home. State investigators say it's their normal practice, but what happened after his body arrived at the funeral home was anything but normal. What was in the place of the organs? Newspaper. Newspaper. Dr. Anderson showed me the pictures of Kendrick's body he'd taken during the second autopsy. It's a Black Friday ad, J.C. Penney ad. Yes. Stuff in the newspaper, being like he was a garbage can inside his body. It's unbelievable. I'd imagine that that's a different kind of pain. Yeah. Why do you think that there would be newspaper stuffed in, in your child? I never heard of that before. Never. Neither had the founder of a national embalming academy contacted by CNN who said it's not consistent with the standards of care in the industry. Nor had the president of the National Association of Medical Examiners who told CNN he's never heard of this practice. Why would the funeral home discard his organs and stuff them with newspaper? The question is, why did he tell us? So what exactly did the Harrington Funeral Home do with Kendrick's organs? And why was he stuffed with old newspaper? We went to their office to find out, but their response to us? No comment. However, in a letter to the Johnson's attorney, Harrington Funeral Home owner Antonio Harrington denies he received Kendrick's organs. He writes in part, his internal organs were destroyed through natural process and henceforth were discarded before the body was sent back to Valdosta. It's another disappointing answer for parents determined to know what happened to their son before and now after his death. And they admit they're struggling. Unbearable, just about. The only thing that wakes you up in the morning is just to keep pushing. Victor Blackwell joins us now. Uh, I mean, uh, this is uh, unbelievable newspaper inside this young man's body. I understand there's an investigation into where Kendrick's Johnson's organs went and why. What do we know about it? Anderson, we contacted the Georgia Secretary of State's office because they issued licenses to funeral homes. We wanted to check on the history of Harrington Funeral Home. And when we told them why we were calling, they decided that they, too, wanted to know where are Kendrick Johnson's organs. And they wanted to know more about this process, this practice of stuffing bodies with newspapers, something that they'd never heard of either. How was the family's autopsy doctor able to determine the cause of death then? Yeah, I asked him, if the organs aren't there, how can you determine how uh, Kendrick died? Well, he says that essentially blunt force trauma was not in the organs. It was in the right side jaw, which was actually noted as bruised during the paramedics report on the day he was found. He dissected the jaw, which had not been dissected in the first autopsy, found bleeding under the skin. He dissected the left side as well, did not find the bleeding, and he concluded that that bruising indicated, also with the bleeding, that there was blunt force trauma, that Kendrick took that blow to the neck. You know, Victor, one, one thing I, I hadn't noticed, and actually a viewer uh, who, who works in gyms noticed and tweeted me about this uh, the other day, was that it looks like all the mats are rolled really tightly, except for the one that Kendrick was found in. That seems to have had a large uh, opening. hits Hollywood. Stephanie Mosley, a beautiful actress and a dancer who worked on the VH1 show, hit the floor and with J-Lo, Pharrell, Rihanna, amongst many others, shot to death at the hands of her rapper husband who then killed himself. And all of this witnessed by boxing champ Floyd Mayweather Jr., who was FaceTiming with the rapper when the murder-suicide took place. It is unbelievable. We were on the scene minutes after the gunshots rang out. And then again today, asking something that everybody's asking, why? Why and how could something this horrific happen? Our top story, a murder in Hollywood.
I knew Stephanie pretty well. She was one of my dancers for a while. It was a, it was a devastating thing. She's just loved. She will never, ever, ever, ever be forgotten. She is so loved and, and just, it's just, just too short, and that's it. Giving back is, you know, why we do all this. Stephanie Mosley was stunning and danced with Hollywood's elite. J-Lo, Janet Jackson, and Chris Brown. She also starred in VH1's Hit the Floor. E.T. was with her behind the scenes. She was just a huge light for us, a wonderful person. Her husband was rapper All Earl Hayes. The up-and-comer was featured in Floyd Mayweather's Showtime documentary. TMT. Those dreams ended abruptly Monday morning. Now, the couple lived here in the Palazzo. It's a high-end apartment complex. Around 8 a.m., a neighbor called 911 after hearing a woman scream and 10 gunshots were fired. SWAT raced to the scene. The bodies of Stephanie and Earl were discovered inside. Now, this is where the story takes a disturbing twist. We've learned from multiple sources that just before the apparent murder-suicide, Hayes called boxing champ Floyd Mayweather Jr. Hayes is a member of the Floyd Mayweather money team. He has called Floyd his brother. Apparently, Hayes was in a rage. Well, Floyd Mayweather Jr. may not have seen everything that happened, but we have learned that Hayes pulled out a gun, shot his wife, then shot himself. And while Floyd may not have seen it, he definitely heard it all. We were blindsided by this. He really loved her, you know? He really loved her. The couple's friends were stunned, including Pharrell. She was a backup dancer for him on The Voice in November. I got some crazy news today, but... Oh, no, what's that? No, 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 no. You don't want to share? No, gotcha, no. gotcha. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, yeah. blessings and love and light, all right? I'm praying for them, too. Rihanna Instagrammed a photo of Stephanie, and Chris Brown wrote, Rest in peace, baby girl danced with me on tour and was always the coolest person. Actress Eva Marcel knew Stephanie since they were teenagers. She's just, you know, living living her dream, or at least trying to. It actually still is very surreal. I haven't really fully processed it, to be honest. James LaRose is the EP of Hit the Floor. None of the cast or crew of Hit the Floor wants Stephanie to be defined or remembered for yesterday. It's a hideous, awful thing, and, and we needed to focus on Stephanie and the amazing person that she is. Our thoughts and prayers with everyone involved in this sad, sad story. By the way, I found this kind of bizarre that last night after the shooting, Floyd Mayweather Jr. was spotted at the Clippers game sitting courtside, and we're talking about he was very close with Hayes. Hayes was a member of the money team. They traveled the world together. Hayes called Floyd his brother. And even after witnessing, close or not close, after witnessing something like that, to be at a game is just bizarre. I don't understand it. Yeah, all right. Far from over. Weeks before linebacker Jovan Belcher killed Cassandra Perkins, he texted a... another girl that he would shoot Perkins if she didn't leave him alone. That's just one of the new details in a police report released today. Lindsay Shively read every word. Lindsay. Every word, Krista. Here they are, the dozens of pages detailing first town accounts and very disturbing details from people that witnessed everything that went on that day. Problems between Javon Belcher and the mother of his child, Cassandra Perkins, were no secret. Not only did Belcher receive help from chiefs counselors and staff, but he told Brittany Glass. We're trying to cut you a break here. This dash cam video shows police finding Belcher passed out in front of Glass's apartment hours before the murder-suicide. Police reports obtained by 41 Action News show Glass admitted she and Belcher had shared an intimate relationship since March. She was with Belcher drinking that night and said he was quiet. He had already told Glass that Cassandra Perkins had threatened to take all of his money and their child if they split up. That Perkins knew how to push his buttons and make him angry. Even texting Glass weeks ago that he would shoot Perkins if she didn't leave him alone. Glass thought it was a joke. December 1st, Belcher proved he meant it. Oh, yes, it was me. 
911 tapes reveal Belcher's mother pleading with dispatchers for an ambulance. She later told police she heard Belcher and Cassandra Perkins arguing about one or both of them partying. She said they often fought over finances. Okay, they were arguing and each yeah, other. Yes, they was arguing. Then Belcher's mother heard several gunshots. She ran downstairs with the couple's baby and found Belcher kneeling next to Cassandra Perkins on the bathroom floor. He said he was sorry and kissed Cassandra's forehead before he ran to his mother. He said sorry again, kissed his mother and baby, and sped away in his Bentley. The medical examiner's report shows Cassandra Perkins' body was riddled with at least 10 bullet wounds on her neck, shoulders, chest, arms, and legs. When police arrived at his home, they found his gun in the bathroom sink above Cassandra's body, a black 40 caliber semi-automatic Springfield Armory handgun like this one. Belcher had another gun with him at Arrowhead when he pulled the trigger on himself in front of Coach Romeo Crennel and Scott Pioli. Coming up tonight at 6, more details from Romeo Cornell and Scott Pioli about those final moments at Arrowhead and a tattoo found on Belcher's body that may give us more insight into his final gesture. Lindsay Shively, 41 Action News. City police released new details in the murder-suicide involving former Chiefs linebacker Joe Von Belcher. Lindsay Shively read through it. She's live in the newsroom now. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Elizabeth. This report just came out today, and you can see why. It's been a while since the murder-suicide, but this is so thick. Every single person involved, from every reporting officer to people who witnessed this tragedy, spoke their words about the final moments, the final